So Shador Sanders is a young kid, and he's still old enough to be judged for his his mistakes because I think he made a mistake. And there are a lot of people out there. Colorado is such a polarizing topic. And I, I talk about this anytime they come up here on the show. I try to be as down the line on them as I can because mostly what you what you find in the internet space is – People on one extreme, Colorado is the greatest thing to ever happen to college football. How could anybody not like them? And the other extreme, Deion Sanders is terrible. I hope he loses every game by 30 points. And I try to be somewhere down the middle because that's actually where I fall. There are things about Colorado that I understand that I think people overreact to, like their transfer portal moves. Like, oh my gosh, all these players are leaving. They're bringing in a lot of guys too. Got another top 10 transfer portal class. Like, that's just the way they're going about it. It's different. It's unique. We'll see how well it works. I think they're a bull team in, in 2024. But on the other side of the spectrum, you have got people who think Colorado is terrible. And Deion Sanders has at times wondered why. Because he's you know been a, a public a number of times that, that I've seen in which he, he says things to the effect of, man, I, I don't attack anybody. Everybody's always coming at me. Why is everybody coming at me? And you're just attacking. You just want to be negative and all this sort of stuff. Well, this would be the quintessential example of why people can't stay in Colorado. This is it. This right here is what drives people insane and makes people want to root against you. It's not some ingrained haterade of Deion Sanders. It is this sort of behavior that people do not care for. And I think this standard is pretty widely applicable across sports. We, we don't like people that are trash talking for no reason, punching down or, you know, taking shots of people they don't need to. So th th this is what I'm talking about here. Uh, the Athletic had a piece documenting where each of the, I think, 53 guys that Deion Sanders basically told to hit the road when uh, when he first got to Boulder because they weren't good enough and he was bringing in a bunch of new players and whatnot. And, and one of those guys is Xavier Smith. And Smith uh, said, quote, I was actually getting mad like tears to my eyes because, bro, you never even tried to get to know me. He was destroying guys' confidence and belief in themselves. The way he did it, it could have been done with a little more compassion. I don't think, end quote, I don't think there's ever going to be an easy way to come in and just completely shift the culture. I have seen this happen at multiple levels of college football. And look, guys are going to get ticked off. Guys are not going to be happy. They're going to feel mistreated when you come in and you're trying to reset an entire culture. And I defended Deion Sanders coming in and basically saying, bunch of you guys aren't going to be here because you're not good enough. They weren't. They, they weren't. That's just the fact. That That is an objective fact. I, I don't lament or think it is wrong that Deion Sanders came in and wanted to completely overhaul the roster. And guess what? They were a better football team. They won the same number of conference games, but they won three more games than they did in their first year. And in 2022, they were one of the worst Power 5 football teams in recent memory. So Shadur Sanders then responds to this quote coming out from The Athletic and says, quote, I don't even remember him, TBH, which is just, you know, slang way to say I don't remember him. Bro had to be very mid at best, end quote. This is the sort of thing that turns people against Colorado, okay? Because to be frank, this is just obnoxious. This this is an this is an obnoxious, immature, and selfish thing to say. He's telling his story. There's nothing r ridiculous or uncouth about what I think that's word about what Xavier Smith said. He's just saying, yeah, this is what happened. This is how I this is how I felt about it. You know what you should do. If you are Deion Sanders or if you're Shadur Sanders in this spot, don't respond. Don't give it the time of day. You decided as a program that guy is not good enough to help us right now. And guess what? He probably wasn't. Let's be honest. He probably wasn't. Why do you need to go out there and take a public shot at him? This is not even... <laughs> I, I, I get at some level Shadur is defending his dad, but there are so many people who comment and say things about Deion Sanders. You have to just accept it. You, you, it is not a good look, and you paint a target on your back and make life harder for yourself 
navigating the media space as you try to go to the NFL, as you play a college football season this year, you, you, you increase the way that people feel negatively about you. That's what you're doing, which, which is why I'm talking about it on the show today. And because th this is just the quintessential reason that, you know, the, the narrative that, you know, Dan Lanning was certainly playing into to motivate his team last year in that game uh, in Eugene when they beat the Buffs 42 to 6. We're fighting for wins. They're fighting for clicks. And that's kind of become, that's become a thing for Colorado fans. It's like, oh, well, are you just fighting for clicks? We're not just fighting for clicks or whatnot. This is th this right here. This is, this is exhibit A of we're just fighting for clicks. And of course it works. Of course it works. But when people wonder, the, the reason I bring this up on the show today is because I come across fans, whether in the comments section or on or on, on Twitter or just talking to college football fans who like Deion Sanders or who like Colorado or diehard Buffs fans, man, why do they hate Deion Sanders? Why don't they like? Because this sort of behavior, like go back to last year when they beat a three and nine Arizona State team on the road and he's going to the student section, tapping his watch and in a flat. Now, I don't know what was said from the students. Maybe I wouldn't react that differently if, if you had people yelling all sorts of stuff at you during, during a college football game. But I just don't want to see Colorado fans or players or media members playing the victim card of, well, you know, people are just coming after Colorado because it's the bus and because it's Dion and all this sort of stuff. Like, no, if you want to wade into these waters, okay. But actions have consequences. Words and quotes and decisions that you make have consequences. There's another side to it. And if you go out and bash former players who are just telling their story of, yeah, this is what it was like and I didn't feel like it was handled very well. What, what, what is that? Some massive indictment? How many former Alabama players would say Nick Saban was mean? He screamed at me. He wasn't very nice and whatnot. Do you think Nick Saban would ever respond to that? Or the Nick Saban's kid, if he played football, would respond to that? Nick Saban's kids might, might have played football once upon a time. I honestly have no idea. Maybe his grandkids play. I don't know. But there, there's just nothing to be gained. You just paint a target on your back. And maybe that's the point. But when the narrative around your team and program is you care more about, about getting clicks, about getting attention and getting hype and whatnot than you do actually winning football games, you are feeding into that narrative pretty directly when you come out and are, and are bashing, oh man, that guy's mid or whatnot. What are you doing? What, what, what are you doing? It, it comes off as, as cocky and immature, and those are sentiments that fans, I think pretty universally, no matter who it's coming from, don't care for. But Colorado perpetuates such things regularly, and Deion Sanders allows for them to go on. Like, this is not a Deion Sanders-specific, you know, a take. I mean, it, it Shadur came out and said something, but guess what? That, that's the sort of environment that Colorado plays in. And it, you know what? It gives them an edge. We'll see if it works out this year. And eventually this will get played out on the football field. That's still several months away. And, and in the meantime, you're not painting your program. You're not painting yourself in a positive light. Now, maybe you don't care. Maybe, maybe you don't care if you're Shadur Sanders. I don't, I don't care what people think. Okay, just, just get ready to take shots. Like, Go back to what was it, the Colorado State game last year. Travis Hunter got popped, and he didn't have to, and he got hurt, and he ended up, you know, making up with the guy and said, you know, it's all it's all good and everything like that. But you know why that safety wanted to go over there and pop Travis Hunter because he was talking a bunch of smack. That's the that's the environment you put yourself in. That's the situation you put yourself in. You can't expect to do this sorts of stuff and not have there be repercussions on the field it's just gonna happen appreciate everyone listening i'll see you next time and until then hope you have a wonderful rest of your day